Hey! Yo, hey everyone, Andrew here, bringing you another video, and today we're going to be continuing Pokemon Week. And we are going to be jumping into Generation 3. And in Generation 3 is Pokemon Sapphire version, Pokemon Ruby version, Emerald version, Fire Red, and Leaf Green. As you can see, I don't have Sapphire on me. The reason is, is I loaned it out to my buddy and I have not seen it since. Uh, we don't talk anymore, so I'm probably never going to see it again. So, third generation of Pokemon, which up to this point had the most amount of gains in its lineup, a total of five. This is a trend that then gets brought into Generation 4, and possibly with Generation 5. However, up to this point, the most amount of gains in a lineup is Generation 3. In addition to that, with the exception of Generation 1's 150 Pokemon that are introduced, Generation 3 introduces the most amount of new Pokemon to the Pokemon lineup, with 135 new Pokemon. We then travel to the Hoenn region, which has its own set of villains, Team Aqua and Team Magma, which are either allies or enemies, depending on which version you get. And we go into the Hoenn League, which has various different gyms and also its own Pokemon League. Third Generation is well known for its many additions to the Pokemon game franchise. Allow me to list some of them. Double battles are introduced where you can use two Pokemon in a battle against a trainer who is also using two Pokemon. We have that 135 new Pokemon as well as up to 103 new moves. We also have some new TMs and HMs which are introduced. We have the Pokemon contest introduced. And in addition to that, we have natures, which help determine what a Pokemon is good in for their ability scores and bad in. And we also have attributes, various different special traits that Pokemon have that can help alter battles or just help with your general situations in the games. Happiness is improved greatly in this, as well as breeding. The storage system in the Pokemon box is updated humongously compared to the previous versions. In addition to that, there was a complete graphic overhaul with everything looking smooth, crisp, beautiful, and colorful. And we also get the remakes of the original red and blue version with red fire and green leaf. The reason why they did green leaf instead of like blue water is because in Japan they originally did red and green rather than red and blue. And with these new remakes, we get the same old games, newer, crisper, and with more content. In addition to that, a small region known as the Seven Islands are introduced in a continuation of the original story. These are just some of the small things get added. Other stuff gets added like weather conditions are now play a huge factor in the Pokemon uh, gameplay. Uh, shininess is completely changed. Berries are handled differently. You can grow berries now. There are several different things that are added. Pokeblocks, like uh, making a Pokemon more beautiful or tougher looking or stuff like that, which ties into contests. So there is probably the most new additions to the Pokemon gameplay in third generation. So let's talk first about the Pokemon themselves. And to be fair, for Generation 3, I'm only going to be talking about the new additional Pokemon that come from the Hoenn region. It would be unfair to include the Kanto and the Johto Pokemon, seeing that they are available in this, and their respective versions. We're looking at more or less the new Pokemon. And I have to say, the Hoenn region Pokemon are some of the best looking Pokemon out there. Not quite as good as Generation 1 in my opinion. However, Generation 3's Hoenn region Pokemon look great. They look like some traditional Pokemon with traditional feels to them, while at the same time some of the Pokemon have a newer, more futuristic look to them. For example, you have a traditional looking Pokemon like Flygon or Salamence who look like dragons, and then you're going to get a Pokemon that looks uh, pseudo-futuristic, like Gardevoir, who looks like a alien-humanoid uh, creature hybrid. Uh, or the Regis, Regis Rock, Regie Ice, Regis Steel. So the look of the Pokemon look great. And on a whole, including all the Pokemon up to this point, 
the looks in general, the graphics for the Pokemon, the conceptual art that is used for them looks great. All the Pokemon stand out very nice. Let's talk about how these Pokemon fare up in the competitive battle scene. I have to say, Hoenn Region Pokemon also has some of the best Pokemon in the battle scenes, at least up until this point. There's a lot of variety that comes out of them, a lot of great typing that comes out of them, and a lot of things you can do with them. The addition of so many new moves, abilities, and natures give you huge variety, and you get a lot of great Pokemon. For example, probably the best new addition to this generation or the Pokemon lineup would be Swampert. Swampert is a diesel tank who is by definition a bulky water who has a ground attribute that makes him immune to electric attacks. He does get that time for weakness against grass, but hey, I'll take that trade off. So you get a lot of good Pokemon that can be used competitively in here. Like Salamence basically replaces Dragonite as the top hitting Dragon Pokemon. There are a few Pokemon that just aren't good at all, like Delicat is, I mean, it's pretty looking, but it's not really good. Or Beautify, who is just absolutely dwarfed by Butterfree. And you know that you're shit when you're dwarfed by Butterfree. But the good definitely outweigh the bad in the third generation Pokemon lineup. In addition to that, all the previous Pokemon from previous generations get a complete overhaul in design and become a lot better. Let me take my favorite Pokemon, for example, Charizard. Charizard, up to this point, now has a second Pokemon typing and flying. He gets some new moves thrown in there, like Dragon Claw or uh, Smoke Screen or Outrage. He also gets his breeding moves that get added in there, which Outrage was a breeding move. Or Belly Drum. People love Belly Zards. He also gets a ability upgrade, and with the ability to use Nature's to increase the attack power, special attack, defense, speed, special defense, so on and so forth, just gives you so much options with the Pokemon. I'm using Charizard just because, well, he's my favorite Pokemon, but this is a thing for all Pokemon out there. There's so much more that you can do with the old Pokemon as well as the new one. So not only do we get an additional great new 135 Pokemon, but we also get a complete update of the previous Pokemon, which is something we really don't get to see in later versions, because the thing is, is third generation in comparison to the later versions, Pokemon-wise, doesn't change that much, so the older Pokemon don't need as much of an update as they did going into third gen. So third gen did a lot, not just for the new Pokemon, but they catered to the old ones too, which was nice. Let's talk about the overall feel of this game. There's a lot to offer to this game. When you're done with the complete story mode, there's still something like the Battle Frontier, which is, again, a brand new addition to the Pokemon game franchise. You can go in there and play hours worth of gameplay there. And with the remakes of Fire Red and Leaf Green, you get new additional content in that. You go through the same traditional story, Everything's updated, looks better, you get new items, you get everything that is offered in 3rd gen in these updates, but you also get an additional story with the Seven Islands. You get to go there and try to thwart Team Rocket trying to make their return, which bridges the gap between the Kanto story and the Johto story, because a lot of references to the Johto stories are in there, and we can kind of see where the transition is. Continuity in Pokemon isn't really that big of a deal. I mean, who really cares about the story that much? You're there to capture, train, and beat the shit out of your friends. But it's nice to see that they are trying to carry it to that small demographic of people that do care about the stories and do care about the continuity of Pokemon. Interesting fun fact for you is that because of the release of Fire Red and Leaf Green, along with third generation games, Along with the release of later remakes, Heart Gold and Soul Silver, with the fourth generation games, many people believe that the Kanto story and the Hoenn stories happened at the same time. And three years later, the Sinnoh stories and the Johto stories happened at the same time, with corresponding characters going between each game. For example, Jasmine, who is a steel type gym leader from the Johto region, shows up in the Sinnoh games. Just a small random fun fact. How much validity is to that? We don't know. But, I mean, if you look at it, the timeline would look like this. Kanto, Hoenn story. 
Then we have the Emerald Story. Then we have Johto Sinnoh. And then we have the Unova region. But again, just random fun fact. On a whole, how does third generation stack up to the other generations? In my own personal opinion, third generation is without a doubt the best of the generations. Let me tell you why. Reason number one, probably the most important, is third generation add the most amount of content to the Pokemon franchise. After third generation, fourth gen doesn't offer all that much. It does offer a few things like the move switch up, but it doesn't offer that much. Fifth generation doesn't offer that much either. Third generation offers the most when it comes down to new features, and these new features kick ass. Battle Frontier, Contests, Natures, Abilities, Increase in Breeding, How the Berries Work. Just in general, the Pokemon, the gameplay, everything is great. In addition to that, the graphics have a certain sense of charm to them that you can go back and play these games and not have them feel dated and old like... Generation 2 and Generation 1 are. So the amount of content that they add here is more than any other Pokemon game, and it's probably the best content added. The games themselves, content-wise, is just phenomenal. The Ruby, Sapphire, and Emerald games are immense and filled with so many things you can do. It's just mind-boggling. The amount of content in those games is fantastic. Same with the remakes uh, with Red Fire and Leaf Green. Ridiculous amount of content. But talking in general, there's just so many levels and depths to the Hoenn region, and it feels like one of the biggest regions of all, especially its ocean area, which I really do like. It also has some of the more interesting gym battles in there, with my favorite gym leader, your father, Norman, who has probably the most interesting gym that, although is based off type, is also based off abilities and strategies. I feel as though Pokemon's getting kind of lazy with its gyms, like, you know, oh, here comes another fire gym, here comes another water gym. I would really like to see the next generation or the next set of games deal with Pokemon gyms that based off of maybe always hitting or status effects or area effects or uh, having one-hit KOs, kind of like how Norman's gym had. The third generation had just tons of content, a great story, interesting bad guys, and just on a whole, it was full of content. The next big reason why third generation was fantastic is because of the remakes. Leaf Green and Fire Red. With Fire Red being my favorite Pokemon game of all time. Although Leaf Green and Fire Red are kind of the same. These games did a fantastic job at doing a remake. They took everything that was good about the original games, brought over put all the features from Generation 2 and Generation 3 into them, and then add new content. That's a remake, people, and it's a remake done very well. It still has the nostalgic feel of the original games, the challenge factor that came with Generation 1, with all the brand new features of Generation 3. I cannot stress enough how much... Fire Red and Leaf Green are my favorite Pokemon games. They're just full of content. They just have everything that I want from a Pokemon game. Beautiful looking Pokemon. All the great new features. They just worked out great. And they were nice additions to an already great Pokemon lineup. Ruby, Sapphire, and Emerald were also some of my favorite Pokemon games. And they just worked out pretty well. I'll give you an example of how much I love 3rd Gen. I'm trying to be unbiased as I can here, but it's pretty much impossible because, well, this is really just my opinions on stuff, so I'm going to be biased. But, here's an example on how much I love 3rd Gen. In my Pokemon playing, I have gone through each generation. Upon reaching 4th generation and 5th generation, I play through the games, complete my Pokedex, get my Pokemon to level 100, and then I don't touch the games again. Uh, with the exception of Heart Gold, which I replay sometimes. But, I don't play those generations anymore, 4th or 5th gen. I did all I can in it. I go back to 3rd generation, which was fantastic. I redo games, I add more to the games that I don't redo. And in addition to that, 3rd generation had the most well-balanced Pokemon tears out of them all. 
period. Fourth gen really hurt Pokemon when it came down to the competitive gameplay because they introduced a lot of factors that just hope hurt Pokemon in general. For example, the bane of my existence, Stealth Rock, really hurts flying, electric, and fire type Pokemon, especially if you have the combination of those three. For example, Charizard, Zapdos, they take a heavy hit when using them. Fourth generation just doesn't have that great of a balance when it comes down to Pokemon. I know a lot of people like the competitive scene in fourth and fifth generation, saying it's more in depth, but it's definitely not as fair. But in third generation, we still have the great competitive scene, and we also have a great balance in the Pokemon tears. There's a lot of Pokemon in the overused category, rather in the underused or never used category. It's just great a great balance of Pokemon. And another new feature that third generation brought in is the event Pokemon, which is great. It allows you to have that specialness when getting that special event Pokemon. Lucky for me, I was able to get all my event Pokemon. Because while I have my red fire version, my fire red version, 100, 200, 300 percent complete. All the Pokemon, everything done, that game is complete as much as I can get it. So, as you can see, I love third generation. In my opinion, it's the best of the Pokemon generations. It's lasted the test of time, it has great replay value, it's fun, and you don't feel ashamed by replaying it rather than playing the older or the newer fourth and fifth generation. In addition to that, third generation really set the stage for the later generations because, in my opinion, they really have to live up to what was done in third gen. If you love Pokemon, you're going to love these games. And if you haven't played third gen, I highly, HIGHLY recommend picking them up. But get them while you can because they're also some of the most expensive and hardest to find of the Pokemon games. Ironically, when I go out to video game stores or comic book stores, Pokemon Red, Blue, Yellow, Crystal, Gold, and Silver are very cheap. The 4th and 5th gens are very cheap. But, a 3rd gen game goes for about 20 to $30. Dollars. There you go. So, 3rd generation, in my opinion, the best of the Pokemon generations. But, does that mean necessarily the other generations are bad? Well, you're just going to have to see when tomorrow we jump into 4th generation Pokemon and see if it really can be a good Pokemon generation or just falls into the shadow of the glory that was generation 3. With that said, I'm going to end this video here. This is Andrew saying, peace out for now.